Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. Today I want to plant the last perennial that is still set on the driveway for quite a while with you, which really excites me because there was also a variety we had an eye on for quite a while and I discovered it, well not discovered it, I saw it already in an online shop actually a couple of years ago, but then I suppose two and a half years ago I visited a garden in the south of Germany and they had it in there. So the first time when I could really see it and really how it was in flower and bloom and I thought okay it is a very special color and I thought yeah I think I need to find a location for it. So I have seven plants in total which is not a lot because I just want to put them in two different areas just to see and try and test. Alfie's already with me, you can tell her she's in my back. So yeah, I just wanted to see in two different locations how it thrives and how it progresses. But before, I just want to give you a quick look actually what is growing here on the trellis, just framing the garage and all the wood for the fireplace. The wisteria in my back looks kind of fantastic already. It is about to come to bloom now, bit by bit and more by more by the day. And it's just such a glorious sight. I kind of think it must be a very good year for wisteria in general, because I saw on Instagram that a lot of people, I mean, their wisterias are pr pretty much gone over by now, I think, when mine comes to life. But I thought that, oh, a lot of people suddenly share their wisteria, which wasn't the thing last year. So I think, yeah, it is a good year for them. They look fantastic. But what I'm gonna do now is, I haven't gathered any of my tools, but still I wanna show you quickly the area where I wanna plant and then also tell you what I actually wanna plant. So hope you are excited about about today's little quick planting project in my garden. All right, it's a little later because what happened? My microphone just died and I was filming and filming and then I realized, oh, there is no audio on it. So here we go again, basically, but at least I exactly know what I want to tell you now. So this is a top layer of this slope and on the left, doesn't it look lush and amazing? I'm so happy with how everything comes together this year, but I don't want to spoil too much because I think a little garden tour is on its way just so much about it. I think it is going to be glorious when everything comes to bloom. But where I want to plant the first patch of asters is here. It doesn't look like a lot now, but there are already a couple things in there actually. There is, I just come up with my finger, a patch of cosmos here. There are three dahlias here. There is great burnet there. Then just behind the fritillaria, there are three more dahlias. And then there are four pots of asters. There are three pots. Oh, the fourth one is in the upper garden. I just put it there because I just wanted to give you some key details about the plant. So normally four pots should be standing there and I will put four in there because I think this is going to be really wonderful color and plant combination because I have a drift of four great brunettes here and then I have three dahlias there and then the aster. So I will have the great impact and the tropical vibe of these really zingy red dahlias. Then I have this airy whimsical texture from the great brunet with the red blooms and then I have the aster in a purple with daisy bloom. So I think this is bound to work and gonna look really nice. The second patch of asters is gonna go in the upper garden, in the back part of the upper garden, but there is laundry drying right now. So I was like, all right, how do I show it to you? So I'm a little bit like, let's see, I need to find a way. I can't really show it to you from the distance because then the view is blocked. So I think I'm just gonna find my way and sneak from this side. Sorry for that, but when I do a garden tour, you'll have a closer, better look at this entire situation. All right, I think from this angle it might kind of work. Sometimes you will see like some sheets or a scarf kind of like waving in the wind, but this is a back border on the right back side of the garden. And I kind of just like stretched it out last year because last year there was nothing. It was literally just a tiny strip here in front of the hedges and not a single plant in front of it. And I thought, okay, no, that situation needs to change. So I put Veronica's in there at the back, some Calamagrostis grass, Cal Furster, and then some Aster Astron. And this is Napeta variety called Walker's Low. This is a great border plant, by the way, for the front of the border. It's always beautiful. And then here is a chest not. It really picked up some growth in the past two years and in general it has a really lovely shape. The only thing that I was so disappointed with are the blooms because the blooms are pretty much invisible. It was meant to flower white and I had high hopes on it but unfortunately it just really doesn't. So sad. I had no idea that this exists or that this is a thing but well I'm at least hoping that this will be the first year where I'm going to get some chestnuts out of it. If we continue walking I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the border now. There are roses. These are two roses that I planted last year. This is a variety called Acropolis. Yeah, something Greek. I was like, there's something about Greece about them. They look fantastic. Look at the foliage, glossy, shiny, healthy, absolutely perfect. And it's 
kind of going to stay like this throughout the entire year and they're already budding up so I am expecting beautiful blooms out of this. It's a very intriguing variety. They kind of start a little bit on the peach side and then they age into a pink tone and they're almost like endless summer. Once they start flowering they're going to go through the entire year pretty much through the first frost. So there was a variety that made me extremely happy. In the back there, oh here comes a sheet, in the back there is something that looks a little dead but it isn't and I'm really happy about it. That was a fig tree that I planted last year and if we go a little closer you might see little green buds appearing alongside the entire stem. So yes, it is going to come back. It survived, it made it, very thrilled about it. Then I have some flocks in here. Actually, there was a flox where I kind of have given up on it already and I thought, okay, I'm just going to put it there. Just see how it performs, how it likes its life and it actually loves its life in here. And then this is something where I'm totally in love with, the Aquilegia. I have got dotted um, this Aquilegia throughout the entire border. And this is a very intriguing colour, I think, because Aquilegia, you know them, they're kind of like whimsical and airy, but this colour is so rich and vibrant that you can see it from the distance. It really glows in the sun. They are doubles and the pollen is exposed, so something that I also really love and appreciate. I grew all of my Aquilegia from seed and they are an amazing self-seeder. So it is kind of a plant that finds its way in the border. In the back there is my Jerusalem artichoke, so just there. And then, oh, cardoons, they came back. I completely gave up on them actually after winter because they all look mushy and dead, literally. But they all came back and I'm even expecting flowers this year, which is super exciting. Here is a patch of brown mulch. Last year I had annual phlox in there, which was really cute for cut flowers, but that was it. The plant as a plant was not really lovely to look at and definitely nothing that you want to put in front of a border. So I was like, okay, I've been there, done that, tried it. So mm, something else probably this year. And this is where I want to put the three asters. Beautiful. It should be a great location. As I said, I'm going to give you all the information about this variety and there is a label. So you can just take a screenshot if you are intrigued. I'm going to plant aster. Now it gets difficult again. Oh, there's the ant on the label. Nove Anglae Violetta. I never really know what P1 means. This is so funny, but all right. This one I'm going to plant today. Label goes back into the container. What I will do now is find a nice location somewhere in the shade and give you all the information about this variety. If you follow my garden already for quite a while, you know that I'm a big lover of the autumnal garden, obviously for asters, because I think they just work extremely well with this firework of autumnal foliage, when you have all these leaves changing color to crimson, burnt orange, caramel, and then the combination of those leaves with all shades of different purple from the asters, I think this is just bound to work extremely well. This aster, when you look at the foliage first, I think it has this what I call typical aster foliage, these elongated leaves they are a little bit like furry on the surface kind of like a peach skin which is absolutely typical for these kind of asters but what caught my attention in first place obviously are the blues and I think that they have a very spectacular color combination because the eye or the center of the bloom is really in this burnt rusted caramel orange tone which works extremely well with some of the autumn foliage from the cotinus and then the outer petals they are also an intriguing color because it's something in between berry and purple and I think this variety is the only one where you find these color combinations in one blue. Also the height is quite exciting about this variety. It can grow between 1 meter and 1 meter 50 in height which is quite an impact for an aster and definitely a great addition for a border plant. So depending on how tall you're going to go in your border it's going to look great in the midsection or the back of your border. In terms of location it thrives best in partly shade which is wonderful because next or underneath the chestnut tree it's going to receive a lot of sun in the morning but then for the biggest part of the day it's only going to get scattered some but then at the slope it's going to receive a lot more sun which shouldn't be a problem because these asters once they have established they can also cope with full sun I'm going to see the difference because I put them in two different areas of the garden so I'm very excited about them. One thing they can cope extremely well with drought as well but what happens in general is and this is something that you might have recognized on a lot of aster varieties is that the bottom third of the stems is going to leave lose the leaves um, which 
sounds sad, but because it grows to such a towering tall height, it's not such a problem because when it is somewhere in the mid or back of your border, you anyways have plants in front of it so you won't even recognize it. Very intriguing is also that this is a variety that can hold its weight upright. I'm exposed to a lot of wind here on top of the dike and whenever I introduce an aster, I make sure I've done my research that they are not going to collapse in the borders because I paid my price. I had a lot of asters in here that just could not cope with the situation here. Best example, Boris Blue, it was a total disaster and I've thrown all of them out over the years because they were just too top heavy and the wind just knocked them over every single year. And even a Chelsea chop did not do the job. I could have chopped them in September again and probably like my 20 centimeter tall asters would have collapsed. So this is a variety, I've seen it in the landscape, I've seen it really exposed kind of to wind and it looked great and according to my research it should not collapse. I'm going to keep you posted, fingers crossed I have seven plants as I told you so it's bound to work I think. In terms of soil, this is not fuzzy, it thrives best just in a normal average garden soil, pretty much what I have. And when it comes to the planting, I just plant a dead level and as always, I'm just going to sprinkle some organic bone chips in there, dig it all on and this is all I'm going to do. Mulch it in well so that the moisture stays in the ground and planting these is going to take probably not even 10 minutes out of me because I don't even need to prepare the soil at all. What I'm going to do is quickly pack it because there are starlings actually nesting in one of the walnut trees just to my right here to your left um, which is really cute and I constantly see these birds flying in and out and I think I shouldn't disturb the area here probably too much. This is also why we're not having any dinners on the outdoor dinner table at the moment and also because it's too cold but I'm also like I don't want that they kind of leave a little surprise flying on my head now so what I'm going to do is quickly pack it and go with you to the back and start planting. Planting these took not even 10 minutes out of me, let's face it. I mean, there were just like seven plants and I think just adjusting the camera probably took more time than the actual planting. And I can tell you, improving the soil is definitely worth it. Not only do, do your plants grow wonderful in there, obviously, like underneath the chestnut tree, I've improved the soil last year. And I might not have even needed a shovel to dig in there because the soil was lofty and lovely, has a great texture. So that was wonderful. I just want to give you a quick look at the result. Even though they are not in bloom yet, I already think that they bring something intriguing, interesting to the border. Also this time of the year, once they come in with more growth, because I'm gonna have the accent of the soft grass there, the Calamagrostis grass, then the whimsical look of the Aquilegia, they are about to come to bloom in here as well. And then once the Astis pick up some growth, I'm gonna have a wonderful big clump of the foliage accent there. I think this is gonna work extremely well, especially once they come to bloom, because they are, in this intriguing color world and I think they're really going to glow here in the back of a garden especially with the special autumnal light and I feel they're also going to be a really lovely combination with the cardoon in the back there and the foliage of the bearded iris so yeah that's going to make me happy and once they work well and I'm convinced and happy with them I think I'm really going to make a bigger drift of those in the back here. Can you believe it? When I started planting here, there was a slug munging on my dahlia. So that went straight into the wheelie bin. And maybe a little advice for you as well. Have a firm eye on the slug and snail situation in your garden. And just look at that. The one rechinus, my first patch that I managed to save, has damage as well. So something was eating on it. How is that possible? I can't believe it. They're poisonous. I mean, seriously, slugs and snails eat everything, apparently. Hopefully not the asters, but I think that they definitely not going to munch on my asters. Obviously this space gobbles up whatever I put in here and it doesn't really seem like a lot right now but I think once we're in autumn 
autumn, maybe already in August, I think, it's gonna be a lot more exciting. I'm really waiting to give you update tours and show you how everything comes along here. That's it for today's video. Just one variety that I planted today because literally the asters were the last ones still sitting in their containers waiting to find their way into the ground. I'm happy that everything is in the ground now. So everything that I took with me from Germany is finally planted. And I know it kind of looked like I was planting itty bitty tiny plants, which I did, but it is just the perfect time of the year to plant your perennials now because now they have the entire late spring, early summer, summer season to root in well, to develop a good strong root system so that they won't fizzle out over winter. Having that said, I know that the temptation is always really high to buy your perennials when they are in their full bloom, especially like when asters, you go to the garden center in autumn and you see them in their full growing habit and bloom and you feel like, oh, that is so nice and you buy them. But then if you do so, you put them in the ground and pretty much they won't root in anymore before winter comes. They're just gonna stay exactly in the shape of their container. Having that said, I'm definitely gonna to go to the garden center in autumn and buy some asters because the temptation is always there and I know the feeling and I wanna encourage you to plant your perennials now, Bob. I'm going to be with you and probably buy some in autumn as well. One last thing that I forgot to mention, I'm pretty sure, is these asters are going to come to bloom in between September and October, which I believe most aster, like autumn aster varieties do. I mean, there are asters blooming already in early, early summer and summer, so you can have all different kind of asters. I don't really do that so far. Most of the asters that I have in my garden, they're definitely the autumn varieties, but you never know, maybe I'm gonna just like introduce some lovely summer asters to my garden very soon again. But there's gonna be another project. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I would love to welcome you in my garden very soon again. Take care guys, bye. Mm -hmm.